Hey, this is Notzer, and today's video, we're taking a look at the Gunboat Shimakaze build. This has been teased, suggested on stream, begged, and finally, here's the video for it. It's the tier 10 Japanese DD that you most associate with its 15 torpedoes, but we sort of flip that on its side, and we're going gun. So I switch out the torpedo reload module. In the sixth slot, we go with main battery reload. Unfortunately, it slows down the turret traverse even more, so I have to pick up expert marksmen to sort of bring back some of that traverse that I so desperately desire. It's a Shima, it's got terrible traverse already, and then we pick up basic firing training instead of the torpedo reload at level three. Both of these in concert, along with a strategy that I was trying to employ, it's actually an outstanding gunboat that can go around the map find an isolated target, finish him off one versus one, and then move on with his life. And this works so fantastic against enemy DDs. But unfortunately, it didn't work in this opening game. And the reason it didn't work, I ran into my counter. Kagido, he's got better consumer than me. Plus, Kaurosk, he rounded that island perfectly, so both of them immediately spotted me, and both of them could immediately engage me. However, we didn't take that much damage. Why did we not take that much damage? Smoke is one thing, but Japanese DDs are the other thing. They're small. They've got great maneuverability. They've got great speed, great concealment. These guys are really hard to nail down, wipe out the battleship AP completely nerfed. You can't do more than 10% damage to me. So, this is actually pretty scary. The power level of this ship is pretty outstanding. But we're not going to make use of our guns in this situation. We're going to go after this North Carolina. And yes, the reload is horrible. Horrendous on the torpedoes. But they're still Japanese torpedoes. And they still do a buttload of damage. I expect this North Carolina, for whatever reason, he's moving very quickly between B and C, he's going to take tons of torpedoes. We're just going to send two sets. We've got the first set still reloading. And I'm just going to disengage. I feel pretty confident that those torpedoes are going to find themselves towards the target. And we're just going to verify. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a very dead North Carolina. And it's just chose poorly. Chose poorly. <laughs> chose really poorly. And boy, he 100 to zero. If he had two, 200,000 health, he'd probably die. It, it was just, it was a no-win situation. You don't go there. That's what you do. That's how you win that. You don't go there. So we've captured C point. We've captured B point. We've captured A point. Enemy Edinburgh is out in the open. Figure, hey, maybe I can fire on him a little bit. See who's in spotting range and who isn't. Enemy is the only one. Friendly torpedoes are also in the area, so I don't want to hit them, obviously. But I don't want to continue forward. I don't have torpedoes that I can send towards the Edinburgh. So I've got a couple options here. There is a Des Moines. He's moving into the center. He's close to detection range with radar, 9.9 kilometers. And as I move forward, I'm really trying to commit to helping my team deal with this problem. And absolutely he has radar on. And since he has radar on, might as well fire. So we absolutely fire at this target. Looking for fire, looking for high explosive damage. He is returning fire with the friendly, or taking fire from something behind us. The uh, Kabarosk, yep, Kabarosk is doing it. But look at this Baltimore. He's showing a perfect broadside. Of course the AP of the Des Moines is gonna wipe you out. And I must say, I was playing the Des Moines earlier today, and my AP did not stick in the ship quite as consistently as that Des Moines did. But regardless, takes out the target, and he's still in the capture point for B. Enemy is also contesting A point. C is the only point we have any advantage on. And I was disappointed that no one was spotting this Des Moines. What's going on? I can't fire from this position if no one spots the Des Moines. So instead of staying in the smoke, I leave it right as the Akizuki rounds the island, and where's the Des Moines? Where is the Des Moines? And my radio location finally switches to the Des Moines, who happens to be directly behind the island. And look at where he's going. He's going directly into the Hindenburg's path. Now, the Hindenburg has torpedoes. 
but he's showing a perfect broadside to an AP specialist. He's going to take a ton of damage and probably die. Why? Why are you showing so much side, Hindenburg? What is going on? It's the Des Moines. It is the most lethal AP platform in the game. It just will kill you in 15 seconds. Three full salvos of AP, you're gone. Friendly Iowa returns the favor to the Des Moines, though. And now, B is ours. C is ours. I don't have to exit out anymore. That was my plan, but I don't have to do that anymore. Instead, I can re-engage these enemies as they attempt to push towards A, push through B, and, you know, maybe take out the friendly three or four ships that are trying to defend A point. Obviously, we got to pull Notzer and, you know, do the whole reverse Austin Powers. It's a Shima. It's not quite as big to fill up that gap, but eventually, we're moving forward. And we're moving forward towards Republic. There is a Missouri as well. Kagido, who I would love for friendlies who are in range to take him out. I'm not in range to help out. But Republic. Enemy Montana. Looks like there's an enemy Zhao on A point as well. And a Jean Bar. So I am not really close to any target. And this is the frustration when you are dedicating yourself to a full torpedo build. Every second that the, the, the torpedo is sitting there, not reloading, you are missing out on that torpedo reload bonus, right? But honestly, the only target I can send torpedoes at is this Republic. And it kind of looks like he wants to go into A and follow his teammates. There is a chance that he might turn up north to continue the pursuit of the friendlies, the friendly Iowa and the friendly Minotaur. But I don't know that in that exact moment. I send one set at the Republic, and this is assuming that he'll turn back, and then I decide to send two more sets at the Jean Bar. And the reason I sent at the Jean Bar, he doesn't see me. He's behind an island. He is pushing forward aggressively. I figure that he wants to try and make use of his forward-mounted guns. Because of that, he is going to be more inclined to just continue moving forward with his momentum and relying on his angling against enemy HE and AP shells. But angling doesn't really do that much when a full broadside of torpedoes is potentially in line to do damage to him. So as the torpedoes are going off, doing their own thing, this enemy gearing is trying to come in and snipe the Akizuki. I'm going to go back and respond. And we're just going to verify how many torpedoes we make contact with. Looks like we're going to get two. So two is better than none. But we got to deal with this gearing. And unfortunately, slow turret traverse takes a long time. Don't really want to reveal myself until I absolutely know I can outgun him. You do have to wait on the guns. But you have concealment to do that. It just doesn't help my teammate. But this gearing, he's completely shocked that I'm in this position. He's probably really disappointed. And he's trying to drop off. Eventually, he fires his gun, though. And it's too late for him. And he's wiped out. Now, we missed out on that kill. But that's okay. B and C point are defended. The enemies have broken through at A. And the Minotaur is the only one left standing. He's probably camping in smoke. He's probably trying to slow them down as best as he can. But he will fall. He will absolutely fall to my team. And, oh, the gearing sent some. No problemo. Shima is one of the most maneuverable DDs in the game. Rudder, turn radius, speed. So it's really easy to feel comfortable. It's the turret traverse that makes it uncomfortable. And yep, Minotaur is dead. The enemy battleships are still moving forward. The Jambar was flooded out. He used damage control. But it's been so, so long since damage control that I don't know that I'll have the chance to have a dot stick on him. He probably would put it out immediately. So I just decide we're going to use our guns. We're going to fire on the target. Maybe we got fortunate and his damage control is down. No, of course not, but... High Explosive Alpha, doesn't matter. It is legit. Even if you're not going a gun build, you need to fire these guns on cooldown. You will set fire very frequently to targets, especially French battleships. 
They've got super soft armor all the way around. But fire these guys on cooldown when no return fire. Rely on one to two dots on the target. And eventually you can get in position to, to then use your torpedoes. And that's exactly what I was hoping to do. This guy, he was aggressive. He put one fire out. And boy, is he going to pay for it. Now we've got two fires on him. Both on the superstructure. I'm looking for a third fire. I want it on that stern. Give me the third fire on the stern. Where you've got great accuracy. But it's just not happening. It's not lighting up. And this guy is barely staying alive. And, you know, maybe I should have just fired directly at his superstructure and gotten a little bit extra high explosive damage there. I was trying to get three dots on a target that had to sit 45 plus seconds and burn down. He had a heal, unfortunately. He's still taking damage, but I think he's gonna live. And since he's gonna live, we're in trouble because there are six enemy ships and there's only four of us. We do have two bases to their one, but all this team has to do is group up and oh no, I did not expect the Shimakaze to be in that position, but Regardless, he is, so I'm just gonna go guns. I have to try and kill this guy as best I can. Now, he is looking like he might actually sail in the path of my torpedoes. I could send another set. I just don't feel like I should use a set against this guy. He can maneuver too easily. The guns, the guns do work. Just absolute, he's just refusing to use his guns. He's using his torpedoes, which I easily avoid because I know that's what he wants to do. We wipe out the enemy Shima. A couple torpedoes make contact with the enemy Montana. That cause a flood, which is going to force out damage control. Enemy Republic is trying to fire with his AP. He missed. And I'm trying to line of sight the enemy with the smoke. Once we know the smoke, oh, AP! If this was 710 and previous, probably would have been dead there. But we're not now, and we still can send the torpedo. And I send at the Montana his direction. And I move away from that direction. Maybe he infers that the torpedoes could be coming from me. When in fact, they're coming from a different angle. And we take out the Montana. Barely alive. But we've swung a 4 versus 6 to a 4 versus 3. All in the span of, you know, maybe 30 seconds. We can even get that further in our advantage with this Republic's death. So instead of going after the Zhao which would be suicidal. Instead, I'm trying to go after the enemy Republic around the island with my guns, and it's just taking forever for the turrets to traverse. This is with expert barksmen. This is with everything I could possibly do to make the guns feel the best they possibly can. And it still takes a really long time. And the first shot, he dodges it. Incoming secondaries, friendly conqueror, takes the target out. We miss out on the Kraken. And I'm disappointed. Gosh, am I disappointed. Man, and that's how the game ended. If I only would have fired at the superstructure and had the two fires, he would have been dead. And I would have five kills, crack it on leash, and the game would have ended sooner. It was just a misplay. But we got four kills, Confederate, Devastating Strike, First Blood, 172,000 damage done, eight torpedo hits, 2,493 base XP, and it feels sneaky good. Right now, people are not familiar with it. You know, maybe the next rank season, you could sort of sneak it in. But when people recognize it's a it's a viable build, they'll counter it. So just keep that in mind. But oh man, was it fun. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you next time.